A brief note before we begin, there's a lot of chit-chat about sex in this series. <laughs> yeah, this story is definitely not for virgin ears. So, Arisha, I want you to picture a pool at a luxury hotel on Miami Beach. Oh, this is perfect. I need a vacation. <laughs> well, it's not just any hotel. It's the luxurious, historic Fountain Blue. Back in the 50s, you could catch legends like Frank Sinatra or Judy Garland lounging poolside or walking through its giant marble lobby. They actually once had to put armed guards at the door just to keep out screaming fans. Ugh, those were the days, drinking Manhattans with old blue eyes. <laughs> yeah, I forgot you were a founding member of the Rat Pack. I don't like to brag. <laughs> On this day in March 2012, 20-year-old Giancarlo Granda is working as a pool attendant at the Fountain Blue. Giancarlo's handsome and fit. He recently kicked a bad video game habit and got himself in great shape. And lately, he's been working this hourly job, dutifully bringing towels and cold beverages to hotel guests. It's a lot of work, sweating it out in the Miami humidity. But today... Something unusual catches Giancarlo's eye among all the beautiful people sunbathing by the pool. There's one guest in particular, and he's noticing how she's noticing him. She's checking him out, like really obviously checking him out. We don't know exactly how the next moment goes down, but Giancarlo walks over to the woman. I imagine he casually asks her if she needs a fresh towel or a fresh drink. She's older than him, He's guessing she's in her 40s. And he thinks she's cute. Brunette, great body, friendly smile. And she keeps flirting with him. At one point, she even takes a picture of Giancarlo with her phone. <laughs> wow, thirsty much? <laughs> Definitely. After some chit chat, the woman tells him her name is Becky. She asks him for his number and he gives it to her. And then she asks him if he wants to meet at her hotel room. Okay, this is getting interesting. Yes, but we're not done. Because according to Giancarlo, she adds one more request. My husband, she says, he likes to watch. Whoa, was not expecting that. <laughs> After Giancarlo finishes his shift at the pool, he gets a call from a blocked number. The caller asks him to go to a hotel near the Fountain Blue. When he gets there, Becky's sitting at the bar. She's nervous. Yeah, I think I'd need a drink too. They both have a whiskey to calm the old nerves. Then they head upstairs together. When they get to the hotel room, there's Becky's husband lying on the bed. Just boom, lying on the bed? <laughs> yep. He's tall, gray haired, pretty handsome, maybe a little doughy around the middle. He's noticeably drunk and giggling nervously. What about Giancarlo? Is he nervous? If it were me, I would have so many butterflies in my stomach. <laughs> yeah, well, Giancarlo reassures the husband that if he starts to get uncomfortable with his setup, he'll get out of there, no problem. But the couple doesn't ask him to leave. Instead, Giancarlo and Becky have sex while the husband watches. Okay, so we're just getting right down to it. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. Is a grown man giggling not enough foreplay for you, Arisha? <laughs> and I should say, this is Giancarlo's version of what happened that night. The couple has straight up denied this is how it went down. Is this couple someone that we know? Oh, just wait. The very next day, Giancarlo says he gets another call. Becky and her husband want to meet again. Oh, boy. Yeah, oh, boy is right. Because Becky is Becky Falwell. And her husband, the one with a voyeurism fetish, that's Jerry Falwell Jr. Do you know who that is? Yeah, he's the son of Reverend Jerry Falwell Sr., right? Yep, who was one of the most famous Christian leaders in the country. And in 2012, Jerry Jr. is the president of the Evangelical University he founded. Uh-oh. Yeah, and we should say up front that the Falwells dispute pretty much all the details of this account. This is Giancarlo's version, but this meeting is gonna turn into much more than a short-term affair. It'll lead to bad business deals and accusations of blackmail. And it'll end in a scandal that threatens to destroy the evangelical empire Jerry and his father built. There is so much going on there that should not be occurring and needs to be stopped. He had no limits. He had no accountability, none. And then I learned, Becky's not as innocent as you might want to believe.
To listen to In God We Lust ad-free right now and to new episodes one week early, join Wondery Plus by starting your free trial in the Wondery app. Download the Wondery app in your Apple or Google Play mobile app store today. From Wondery, I'm Brooke Sifrin. And I'm Arisha Skidmore-Williams. We're the hosts of Even the Rich. And this is In God We Lust. On Even the Rich, we bring you absolutely true and absolutely shocking stories about the greatest family dynasties the world has ever seen. It's a show about power, how you get it, how you keep it, and what happens when it goes to your head. On this series, we're doing something different, something special and exciting. For the next six episodes, we're diving deep into one of the craziest rich people stories of last year. For the first time, we sent out our Even the Rich team of reporters, and we'll be including original interviews and firsthand accounts from some of the people involved. That's right, we're bringing the receipts, baby. <laughs> this is episode one, the Menage a Trois Carnival. The Arisha, remember 2020? I've been trying to forget. <laughs> Me too. But unfortunately, there's not enough hard seltzer in the world. Now, if you were doom scrolling the news as much as I was, you may vaguely recall this story breaking. Jerry Falwell Jr. has resigned as president of Liberty University. A Liberty board member tells Fox News of his resignation, a letter... A one-time Miami pool attendant, Giancarlo Granda, claiming he'd had a seven-year affair with Falwell's wife, Becky, and that Falwell watched when they were intimate. Oh, yeah, I remember. Giancarlo Granda. They called him the pool boy, right? Yes. Super unfortunate nickname. Hmm. And what made it so scandalous wasn't just that someone famous-ish had an affair. It was who was involved. Jerry Falwell Jr. is from one of the most famous Christian families in America. And he was the president of Liberty University, the evangelical school his father founded. A school with some very strict rules. So, Arisha, I want you to imagine you're 18. Ooh, and I'm a ripped male pool attendant at a swanky <laughs> Miami hotel? No. Quite the contrary. You're a nice Christian from a devout family in Virginia, and you just got into one of the most revered Christian colleges in the United States, Liberty University. Getting accepted is something you've been looking forward to since you were a little kid. That's what it was like for Callum Best. My pastor was one of the first graduates of Liberty University. Liberty was, was in the air, you know, where, where I grew up. And so I was aware from a very young age that Liberty was the place where Christians went to school. Callum drove east with his parents in their blue Honda Odyssey with a car top carrier towards the beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains of Virginia. When he got to Liberty in the fall of 2016, he and his parents stopped by his dorm to meet his RAs and right away, he felt at home. I always try to ask people to imagine what it feels like when you walk into a place that is filled with people that you know value you, agree with you, and share just the deepest beliefs about the world that you do. That's what it's like to wake up at Liberty University every day. Liberty's Christian values are written right into the school's rules. Students and faculty call it the Liberty Way. It's kind of a document that just sets out the standards for how people are going to act in the community. Um, for example, you're not allowed to drink. You're not allowed to have sex. You're not um, supposed to curse or do the sorts of stuff that is expected from, you know, good, proper Christians. It's even baked into the curriculum. There was always biblical integration tied into the courses. Like one time we had an evangelism 101 class and we had a project which is basically like you put on a car wash and then trick people into talking about the gospel. The Liberty Way student honor code is no joke. Besides no smoking, no drinking, no drugs, there's also no bikinis, no violent video games, no movies with anti-Christian messages, and finally, and I quote, sexual relations outside of a biblically ordained marriage between a natural born man and a natural born woman are not permissible at Liberty University. Okay, I'm out. <laughs> One person who went there said you aren't even allowed to stare for too long at another student. That's called making eye babies. <laughs> You know, we could make a killing selling eye condoms to these kids. Yeah, I think that's just sunglasses. <laughs> but Callum says that the code of conduct isn't actually a huge problem for most students. Part of key to understanding the Liberty Way is that most people who go to Liberty kind of already agree that the things that are banned by that code of conduct should be banned. 
At the heart of the Liberty experience is something called convocation. Who has the power to raise the dead? Convocation is this big event where the entire residential population of Liberty crams into this big, um, it looks like a, a like a golf ball just shoved into the ground halfway. It's called the Vine Center. 12,000 of us, maybe 13, 14,000. I don't know the exact number. They'll have a Christian rock band, famous guest speakers, a light show. Imagine like a mega church service. Oh, I want to hear you sing it. Lift up your voices, everybody. You will come in. Just being crammed into a building with thousands of other people singing the same words at the same time at the top of your lungs, looking around and seeing everybody just all together in unison about the same mission, about the same goal. And when Callum started at Liberty, the person in charge of the festivities was Jerry Falwell Jr. Uh, Can we just put our hands together for him as he comes? So when, whenever he would come on stage, there's this thing where every student in the building shouts, Jerry! I'm so honored and privileged to welcome two heroes to Liberty University today. Today is better. It's not multiple Jerry's, it's just one long extended Jerry. And so it, it kind of sounds like a boo. Sometimes Jerry's wife, Becky, would join him on stage. Yeah, um, as a mother, I just want to talk to the students. I want to talk to you right here. People know who Becky is. She would come to convocation with Jerry. And sometimes she would like go up to the podium with him and, and say, hey, like kind of kind of take the mic from him when he veered into awkward territory. Uh, trust me, as a mom, I'd rather my child tell me I have this problem. I need help, mom or dad. And don't worry about lose, getting grounded or losing your car or losing any privileges your parents everyone kind of loved her um because she by comparison to jerry right she was just a very sweet very kind very personable figure um sometimes when she came on stage people would do the kind of corresponding becky chant you know had the best first lady ever becky (laughs) one time Callum was on a date when he ran into the Falwells at a restaurant. Like, oh, how are you enjoying your time at Liberty? And, you know, we're, we're too starstruck to really <laughs> say anything at all. It's just, yeah, we're having a great time. Great to see you, Mr. President. You know, that sort of thing. So they're like local celebrities. Right. One student we talked to said they were like rock stars. It was just very cool to see my president and his wife at a restaurant. But here's the thing. When 20-year-old Giancarlo Granda, the pool boy, meets Becky and Jerry Jr., he has no idea who they are. Even after he meets up with Jerry and Becky again a few days after their first encounter for another roll in the hay, Giancarlo is only dimly aware of who they are. Especially not the fact that they're basically the king and queen of a university that doesn't even allow you to make eye babies on campus. After that first meeting in Miami, Becky reaches out to Giancarlo again, This time, Giancarlo and the Falwells plan to get away. Experience the legend of the Florida Keys, Chica Lodge and Spa. Though it's just 90 miles from Miami, it feels like you're worlds away. Our first At the Chica Lodge and Spa. And for the big kids, our tropical tiki bars, fishing, golfing, and snorkeling. Ooh, I want to go to there. (laughs) It's swanky. It's romantic. Lagoons and palm trees everywhere. Rooms there run up to $1,000 a night. Giancarlo travels the 90 miles south from Miami down to the Florida Keys. I feel like he's got to be at least a little excited. I mean, here's this young guy from middle-class Miami. You know he's never going to be in a hotel like this on his own. It's got to be like a completely different world for him. Oh, totally. By the way, a person close to the Falwells told us that Giancarlo only came to the resort for an afternoon to, quote, discuss business. But Giancarlo says that when he gets to the hotel room, he and Becky take the bed together while Jerry takes the couch. Here's investigative reporter Josh Kavensky, who talked to Giancarlo for Talking Points Memo. They go to the Florida Keys and, you know, they have this great time. John, Carlo, and Becky sleep together. Uh, Jerry watches. That's sort of the deal by this point. Bow, chicka, bow, wow. (laughs) Yep. But it's not all sex and voyeurism this time. I mean, there's that too. But also, the three of them get to know each other better. 
The Falwells ask Giancarlo about his life. They seem interested in learning about him. And what happens then, which I think is interesting, is that, you know, Granda, I mean, he's studying business uh, part-time at college and working his way through school as a pool attendant. And he has this kind of business idea, which is based in his experience as this teenager addicted to video games. Giancarlo's got big plans for himself. He has a business idea. And now he pitches it to the Falwells. Here's how Giancarlo later explains it to Good Morning America. I, I shared, you know, this passion project of mine where it's a, it's a company that would connect uh, video gamers suffering with video game addiction and families with health coaches. So it's like a support group for people who are trying to quit video games? Yeah. And the Falwells seem really into it. Giancarlo says they tell him, Oh, I think that's an excellent idea. And, um, you know, actually you could probably partner up with Liberty. And Giancarlo says he still doesn't know who the Falwells are? Nope. To him, they were just two kind of education administrators, these university administrators. He didn't have like a concrete sense of like who the Falwells were or like what Liberty really was. Doesn't Giancarlo know you're supposed to Google a guy before you sleep with his (laughs) wife? (laughs) Well, whatever's going on between these three, they're really hitting it off. Because Jerry and Becky invite Giancarlo on another fancy trip. You know, you should uh, come to New York with us. We're having a business trip and we could talk more about it. This just keeps getting better and better for Giancarlo. Another luxury vacation, and these two seem genuinely interested in his business idea. Rhonda told me that the Falwells had like promised to introduce him to wealthy investors in Manhattan, um, and that they were gonna give you know his business legs. Like, I mean, this was gonna really make it happen. So a few weeks later, he packs his bags and heads to the Big Apple for another romantic getaway with the Falwells. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. There's a lot going on right now. If you're feeling stretched thin, you might want to check out BetterHelp. They'll assess your needs and match you with your own licensed professional therapist, who you can start communicating with in under 48 hours. Now, this is not a crisis line. It's not self-help. It's professional counseling done securely online. Yeah, after this past year, I feel like I'm really benefiting from having a therapist kind of at my fingertips. It was so easy to sign up, and it's just nice to have somebody to talk to Mm -hmm. and remind me that whatever I'm feeling, I'm not alone in those feelings. Yes, for sure. Also, BetterHelp is more affordable than traditional offline counseling, and financial aid is available. Plus, you'll get access to a broad range of expertise that may not be locally available in many areas. BetterHelp wants you to start living a happier life today. Visit BetterHelp.com slash PoolBoy. That's Better H-E-L-P. And join the over 1 million people who have taken charge of their mental health with the help of an experienced professional. Listeners of our show get 10% off your first month, but only by going to BetterHelp.com slash PoolBoy. Brooke, think for a minute about all the quarantine purchases you made. All right, we definitely do not have time for that. (laughs) I know. (laughs) The late night pizza deliveries, the mini succulent trios, the online trainer you ghosted after two weeks. Right. Then there's one of your biggest purchases of the year, something we all have to deal with, insurance. Americans overspend on car and home insurance by billions every year. That's money that could have been spent on more retail therapy. (laughs) That's where the zebra can help you. The Zebra is the nation's leading insurance comparison site for car and home insurance. In minutes, you can compare policies from every major provider for free, all on one independent marketplace. After a few quick questions, the Zebra pairs people with the right insurance company for them, helping everyone save time and money. You can buy online or over the phone with one of their licensed insurance agents. There are no hidden fees or fine print about your personal information. Best of all, the Zebra has no stake in the policy you choose. They're just there to find the coverage that's right for you. Make insurance your smartest purchase yet. Visit thezebra.com slash poolboy. That's T-H-E-Z-E-B-R-A dot com slash poolboy. P-O-O-L-B-O-Y. Mama, mama, la. So, Arisha, for Giancarlo's next big trip with the Falwells to New York City, Guess which fancy hotel they stay at. Mm, I'm going to go with the Marriott. Okay, well, that may be fancy for us, but I'm going to guess Becky and Jerry Jr. don't like stale Danishes the way we do. (laughs) They stay at the Gansevoort Hotel on Park Avenue. Ooh. According to the New York Times review, this is a hotel made for grownups. Those who know how to stay out late and have the wisdom to recover from it all in the morning with a frittata 
a massage, and a dip in the pool by the light of day. Okay, and what exactly are Jerry Jr. and Becky telling other people at Liberty about these fancy trips? Well, we talked to a former administrator who said no one was really asking questions. I mean, Jerry Jr. is the president of the university after all. Mm, do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> right. In New York, the Falwells treat Giancarlo to drinks by the rooftop pool of the hotel. Reporter Josh Kavensky says Giancarlo would talk about the trip like it was a dream. Grande will talk about how the Falwells took him around Manhattan, how they were like going to the Met and like promenading him through Central Park um, and telling him how his life is going to change basically because of the investments that they're going to get in on together. This would make for a great rom-com montage. Oh, totally. I can see a slow crossfade between them as they lick ice cream cones. <laughs> Giancarlo squeezing in between Jerry and Becky on the same side of a booth. I mean, <laughs> you're not far off. They also go to this dinner at a place called STK Steakhouse. And one detail that Grande remembered was that they had this dessert there that was called a Carnival Menage a Trois, uh, which is ridiculous. The Carnival Menage a Trois. Mm, the perfect post-coital treat. Yeah, and this is a real thing. It's a mixture of caramel corn, funnel cake, and cotton candy. Okay, that's the last thing I would want to eat. <laughs> <laughs> they also dream big about the future together. At one point, they even discussed Giancarlo's business idea for the video game addiction counseling company. But this time, Jerry tells him to put that idea on hold. If he wants to help people, he needs to make some money first. What does Giancarlo think about getting into real estate? The Falwells suggest that he should look for an investment property in Miami Beach. Now, Giancarlo doesn't have a real estate license or anything, but he's like, sure, why not? Giancarlo says Jerry tells him, your life is going to change. And by now, I imagine Giancarlo believes it because he's finally figured out who the Falwells really are, that they don't just work for Liberty University, they run it. And they're from a famous evangelical family. Finally did some Googling, huh? Yep. And now he's a little worried that his life might change in ways he's not ready for. At that time, you know, he's at this dinner, you know, eating this like very surreal, like kind of ironic dessert. And he's also like nervous because he now realizes who these people are. He realizes that they're like well known. Um, and so he asks them, like, aren't you worried this is going to end up in the tabloids? Like that you're being followed, that somebody in your world is going to find out about this? And they're like, don't worry about it. Relax, Jerry replies. We're not that famous. After the New York trip, Giancarlo goes back to his regular life in Miami, taking classes and slinging towels at the Fountain Blue. But he's also thinking about that idea for real estate investments. He reaches out to a high school friend whose dad is in the real estate business, and he tries to come up with some possible investment properties. Meanwhile, Becky keeps in touch with him. She texts him flirty messages. She sends him songs that she says remind her of him. She even calls one of them our song. Then in July, he gets a text from Becky that really shakes him up. Arisha, do you want to read it? Yeah. <laughs> I was watching some video clips on my phone. Wow. These are two people that are very passionate at lovemaking. Okay, wait, wait, wait. What videos? Who is passionate? What is she watching? <laughs> Giancarlo realizes Becky is watching a video of them together. Giancarlo says that without him realizing it, Jerry was recording him and Becky doing it. Oh, wow. A person close to the Falwells told us that Becky was making a joke and there was no such video. But Josh Kavensky saw the texts. You want to read the next part of Becky's text to Giancarlo? Heck yes. <laughs> But seeing you in person and looking at you in the eyes makes me want to rip your clothes off and get the shit fucked out of me. Okay, wow, okay. <laughs> yeah, you didn't know what you were getting into right there, did you? Not at all. <laughs> so Giancarlo is really freaked out about this alleged sex tape. And Granda at least told me that he was surprised by that. He didn't realize that he was being videotaped as they had sex. And so his reaction was to preserve the message. Just to be safe, Giancarlo says he screenshots the texts and the emails he's been getting from Becky. He might need them as proof someday. The Falwells have a very different version. They say it was Giancarlo who went on to sell intimate photos of Becky to friends. I don't know what to believe. Arisha, pull it together. We're going to get to the bottom of this. <laughs> okay, pass the carnival menage a trois. Gladly. And get comfy because we're going to learn a lot more about the Falwells. There is a church of Satan in the world today. Men and women belong to it. Exorcism is not fantasy. It's real. The devil is a real person with real power. I've got a video of Becky 
when she was nine months pregnant in a bathing suit driving a big tractor. That's on the next episode of In God We Lust. From Wondery, this is episode one of six of In God We Lust, a series about the allure and perils of sex, wealth, and power. To hear more stories about family dynasties, scandals, and fancy people, check out the series we host, Even the Rich, where we've covered everyone from Jay-Z and Beyonce to Britney Spears to the Versaces to Jackie Kennedy. The Falwells and Giancarlo Granda declined to be interviewed for this series. A lawsuit recently filed by Liberty University against Falwell alleges that Jerry Jr. covered up Becky's affair with Giancarlo. If you like our show, please give us a five-star rating and a review. And be sure to tell your friends and fans of crazy rich people stories. You can subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, the Wondery app, or wherever you're listening right now. You can also join Wondery Plus in the Wondery app to listen to new episodes early and ad-free. In the episode notes, you'll find some links and offers from our sponsors. Please support them. Another way you can support the show is by filling out a small survey at wondery.com slash survey. In God We Lust is hosted by me, Brooke Sifrin. And me, Arisha Skidmore-Williams. This series is written and reported by Maeve McCorin. Produced by Chris Siegel. Fact-checking by Natalie Robimed. Additional production assistance from Sergio Enriquez. Our managing producer is Lutha Pandia. Sound design by James Morgan. Our executive producers are Stephanie Jens, Jenny Lauer-Beckman, George Lavender, and Marshall Louie. For Wondery. Wondery.